overall trajectory since the 1990s has been a steady decline in terms of the percentage of payments, down to about 14% in 2022. So 14% of transactions are currently cash? Yes. What's the other percentage? So they are digital payments, predominantly debit cards, 59% are debit cards and other kind of apps like Apple Pay make about 10% and credit cards will be the other. What's left. What's left. Yeah. And then what did the pandemic do to our use of cash? So that accelerated it. Payments overall declined during the pandemic, but cash dropped off more steeply. Uh, and that was in part due to inaccurate information around it being more likely to spread the virus when I think research actually showed that, you know, debit cards are just as likely and, and actually both was low likelihood. So we did see a, a kind of drop off of payments. I think there was a drop of 35 percent between 2019 and 2020. And I think as we came out of the pandemic, the reverse trend um, happened. Also, I think what's becoming clear is that with the cost of living crisis, people are finding budgeting easier with cash. So in 2022, it increased by 7%. And then nationwide saw a 19% increase in withdrawals from their ATMs uh, last year. And also the post offices saw this June an increase of 12.5% in terms of total withdrawal of personal cash. So it is becoming a, a more important means of payment. In terms of different groups, either by age, gender, class, however you want to break it down, what do we know about different groups mm. and their usage of cash? There are lots of different reasons why people might prefer to use cash and they you know, range from things like they just prefer it as a way of budgeting. There's the kind of abacus effect where you know, people feel like they've got more control of their money if they're using cash rather than digital payments. Also, we have one million unbanked people in the country. We also know that really high percentage, almost 90% of the public who were polled by the Bank of England in 2022 want people to have access to cash if that's their preferred way of paying. In terms of what it looks like for different groups, obviously the unbanked, which as I said, is one million people, it's really critical for them. They can't access a bank account and often those aren't already marginalised groups like migrants. We also know from the women's charity Refuge that cash is really important for survivors of domestic abuse to be able to build up a pool of money in order to leave when their bank account may be surveilled by their abusive partner. Then there's the digitally excluded, which are disproportionately older people. I mean, one of the things you frequently see is shops saying, we are cashless. Are they actually allowed to do that? So currently there is no law to stop them doing that. However, you know, if your your legal tender in terms of cash was refused, you could potentially take that up in a small claims court. But there is a push from civil society and, and unions such as the GMB to make this a legal requirement. And actually 70% of the public would support making a legal requirement for businesses to accept cash. Um, what do we know about people's actual access to cash? We've talked about people's usage of cash, but how accessible is it these days? So between January 2018 and September 2023 this year, the number of free-to-use ATMs reduced from around 55,000 to 38,000. We've seen bank branches shutting down across the country, especially in rural areas. That has been accelerated during the pandemic as well. Over 10 years between 2012 and 2022, the total number of bank and building society branches fell by 40%.